Hi friends, this is Joe. I'm back. Now, the new episodes will be released on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. In this issue, I added some of my comments to the stories. It seems they make the narrative a little more lively. Write later in the comments, how do you like it? I need to buy a new computer to create more complex videos and generally continue YouTube. I will be very grateful if you help me with a donation from the link in the description. Like, subscribe, and let's move on to the stories that can happen to each of us. This incident just occurred a few hours ago, and it's still making my head spin. Forgive me if it seems kind of lengthy, but an awful lot was said. I'm an 18-year-old female. My mother, sister, and I were shopping in our local Target. As we strolled around, I recognized a girl named Stacy, who's also a teen I used to go to school with. For reference, I dropped out of high school in my senior year, so I haven't been in my old high school or even seen anyone from there for about a year now. I simply glanced at her and kept moving, doubting that she even recognized me. A few minutes later, I'm on the complete opposite side of the store when I see this girl again. Like last time, our eyes awkwardly met and I tried just to walk past her. But this time, she actually said something. Hey, didn't we play tennis together? Stacy said with wide eyes and a painfully large smile. There was a girl standing next to her, but I didn't recognize her. I simply replied, yes, in response. I was never friends with this girl in school. In fact, I never talked to her or even liked her. That's when she introduced herself as if I completely forgot who she was. She goes on to question if I still went to high school, to which I explained that I graduated a year early with online classes. The conversation started out normal. I thought we were simply catching up due to the fact that I had been absent from school. I kept wanting to cut the conversation short, but Stacy kept prodding about what I was doing now, if I was in college, and what college was like harmless questions. Then the conversation took an unexpected twist. Stacy somehow weaseled the conversation into one about God and Christianity. For reference, I do consider myself to be a Christian, but not one of those hardcore ones who are constantly spewing Bible quotes at strangers. She asked me if I attend church, to which I responded with yes, and her smile grew even bigger. Her whole mantra about God sounded something like this. Back in my high school days, I was always partying and having fun, but it was all fake and no one knew. I was actually pretty sad. That's where I found this church that showed me God's way and his undying love. He accepted me and he'll accept you too. Now I'm always happy for I have God on my side. At this church, God truly appears before your very eyes. He cured me of all my physical and mental ailments like when I messed up my knee playing tennis. The whole time Stacy spoke, there was just a robotic tone about it, as if her words were memorized, practiced, and rehearsed. There was almost no genuine emotion in her, just wide eyes and her never failing smile. Then her friend Ashley, who was in her late teens or early twenties, began her speech. Keep in mind, my mother and sister are just an aisle away waiting on me. Ashley's speech went something like this. For a while in life, I suffered with depression and suicidal thoughts. I was always faking being happy until I found this church. This church truly opened my eyes and my heart. I no longer felt dead inside. This is when she hinted that maybe I felt dead inside too, and the only way to recover from it was to look to God. Ashley also used the word zombie to describe this dead feeling. And that's when I began to really think that there was something wrong with these girls. Ashley continued, I don't think it's a mere coincidence that we ran into you. God led me to you. He wanted me to reveal to you the way. God put a vision in my mind of you opening a present. And that present is our Lord and Savior. She kept on ranting about how this was destiny. And that God put Stacy and Ashley in my path to reveal himself to me. When Ashley mentioned depression and suicide, I couldn't help but believe her for a slight second. I have been struggling with depression for years, but I've kept it quiet. And with me being a believer in God, I was almost fooled into thinking that this was a sign from God, telling me to finally open up and get help. 
But when Ashley began to ramble about her church, that foolish hope dissipated quickly. Then they moved the conversation about their church. They kept stating that it was not just a normal church and that God himself in flesh and blood came to them at that church. They informed me that God came to them to heal all their miseries and grief. Ashley then pulled out a business card which had the church's email, a Bible quote, and her personal phone number. Before the anticipated departure, they kept saying how cool I am and that they were glad to have met me. Then we finally parted ways. I remember my legs being extremely weak as I walked away. That was when it clicked in my mind, are they a part of some kind of cult? Their mannerisms and behavior seemed too scripted to be real. That's when my sister found me and answered my suspicions. Apparently, before I had to endure that 10 minute chat with Stacy and Ashley, my sister overheard the girls having the same conversation with someone else on the opposite side of the store. So this was all scripted and it was their way of luring and persuading strangers to join their church. I realize now how they do it. To reel me into their discussion, they talked about my absence from school and my experience in college. To reel in the other girl they talked with, they started off by complimenting her outfit and inquiring about her artistic hobbies. I wonder how many people they ended up talking to and if they were just walking around the store hoping to find easy targets. I still have so many questions and that's what bothers me the most about this. Being the somewhat religious person I am, their talk about God unnerved me. It's sort of humorous to think about it now, simply because I think crazy God lovers are comical, but I'm still bewildered. If you have any information about how cults operate and how they coax people into joining them, please let me know. Does this incident sound like cult members trying to spread their message or harmless teenage girls simply spreading their love of God? If you have any other questions about what occurred in my interaction with them, please ask. It's also possible that I will see Stacy again because she is attending my college next semester. Although Stacy and Ashley seemed harmless and just overly excited about God, I honestly just hope to never encounter them again. This story definitely has a cult feel. Memorized speeches, aggressive recruitment, promises to find true happiness. All this calls into question the sincerity of Stacy and Ashley's religious seal. Who knows how many of the same unlucky meetings they managed to arrange that day. You should not be so gullible, because pretense can hide behind the most harmless masks. Be on your guard. The next sinister story may be waiting in the most unexpected place. Story 2. I'm a female and I worked at Target for a while over a year ago. The Target that I worked at was very close to my apartment at the time, and it was a pretty enjoyable job for me. My favorite part was talking with coworkers and becoming friends with them. Mostly, what I would do is work in the clothing department. I would do all sorts of things there, and it wasn't very stressful, because things usually don't get busy like they do in the grocery section. At the time of the story, I had been working there for almost four months. I remember it very well. It all started on a typical day at work. I was in the clothing department, particularly the women's section, straightening up items that were out of place. It was during the daytime, and the store was calm. This is when a tall man approached me. Assuming he was a customer who had a question about something, I greeted him, asking how I could help. The man stood there looking directly at me with a somewhat creepy grin on his face for a moment. He then said, yes, you can help me by going out with me tonight. I laughed it off. I had no interest in going out with a man, but I wasn't scared of him or anything. I just told him that I had a boyfriend, even though I didn't actually have one. This was always the best way to tell off a guy that I wasn't interested in, in my experience. The man replied rather quickly, saying, No, you don't. I told him that I did, and I asked the man if he needed help finding anything. He then responded with an even creepier reply, Yes, directions to your house. I laughed off this remark as well. I was just hoping that the man was joking around because this was getting really weird. After he said that, I told him that I had a lot of work to do, and I told him to have a good day. 
Then, I started making my way to another section of the large clothing department that we had. The clothing area was practically big enough to get lost in. I was hoping to lose sight of the man, but when I started moving away, he followed. When I admitted to another section, and he was still next to me, I stopped. I didn't have a problem with confrontation, and I said to the man, Why are you following me? You're kind of creeping me out. The guy put his hands up as if to say, My bad. He then walked away, and it was a huge relief. I had dealt with customers asking me out or trying to flirt with me a couple of times. It didn't happen very often, but here and there, it did. None of them had been nearly as bad as this though. I kept working for several hours. By then, I had forgotten about my experience earlier, but I soon remembered when I spotted the same man. I couldn't believe it at first. This was now about three hours after our first interaction. To me, it was still mind-blowing that he was still in the store. Maybe he had left, and then come back. Either way, it was strange, and it was now a bigger concern for me because shortly after I had spotted him, I saw him look over at me and then look quickly away. It was sort of far away too. It looked like he was almost hiding from me. He stood mostly covered by a rack of clothing, staring in my direction. I moved slightly and kept working to which the man moved slightly as well to keep looking at me. I stopped inside. This was really annoying now. I walked away, leaving what I was doing. I moved to a whole nother section of the store far away from that one. There, I didn't really have any work to do, but I just wanted to get that man off of me. I was now in the grocery area, and I was there for about a minute before spotting the man again. He was walking into the area, and he saw me for a split second and then disappeared into a nearby aisle. At this point, I decided to take my break. I had one that I could take at any time, and I was planning to after I had finished the work that I was doing in the clothing department. But seeing as this creep was back and still following me around, I decided to just take my break now. I radioed in on my walkie-talkie to let my supervisor know I would be taking my break then I headed towards the front end of the store. Our break room was through doors of the front, and I walked in there. When I got inside the break room, I thought back to the crazy situation. Did that man seriously think he was being slick? I mean, I spotted him twice, and it was like he thought I couldn't see him. I just hoped that he would notice I was not there anymore and then leave. I'm not going to lie. I took a little bit extra time on my break. I was pretty concerned. To return back out and, and see the man again, if I did see him, I was going to have to tell a coworker or our security team. I didn't want to have to do that, but I would if it was necessary. When I went back out though, I didn't notice the man anywhere. I went back to work in the clothing department but was much more alert and constantly looking around. I didn't see the guy for the rest of my shift that night, which was about two more hours. I was really happy about this, but still, I thought possibly he was still there looking at me somewhere and had just gotten better about hiding. At the end of the day though, I don't think he was. I left work and went home, not seeing the guy at all. Soon, I forgot all about him. I worked several more times that week, mostly my usual shifts. One night the very next week, I found myself working on a quiet evening. I was almost done and it was past the busy amount of customers that we would usually get between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. I was doing my usual work of organizing a section of the clothing department. That's when I got a call on my walkie. Somebody radioed asking for me, and I radioed back telling them to go ahead. I wasn't quite sure who had said it, but that wasn't uncommon. A big store like Target has so many employees, plus there are always new people. A handful of my coworkers, I could instantly recognize their voices over the walkie-talkie, but many of them I could not. After telling them to go ahead, they asked me to go to Channel 3. This is how we would communicate without other employees hearing us. It was used for more descriptive details or directions on what we were supposed to do. After turning to 3, I told him to go ahead again. That's when I was told that I was needed in receiving to help with something quick. 
I told him that I was on my way and began walking over. Receiving was the back room of the store. Basically, I wouldn't work back there a lot, but I had helped with things there several times in the past. It took me a few minutes to walk all the way back there, and when I had made it, I exited the store into the back. It was very quiet back there. I had expected to see someone waiting for me. I turned my walkie to channel 3 again and said that I was in receiving. Nobody said anything, but I heard my voice echo under somebody else's walkie nearby. I then called out asking where they were, but I didn't get a response. I walked closer to the voice which was near one of the doors leading to outside. First, it was open, and I could see outside into the night. That's when I saw the man again. He stepped out from behind a shelf back there. I couldn't believe he was here. That was you on the walkie, wasn't it? I said to him. The man just started walking towards me. I backed away as he got closer. I looked at how much taller he was than me. If he tried to grab me, it would be difficult to get away. He got closer and I turned around. But as soon as I did, he grabbed my arm. Then he started to pull me backwards. I started yelling, but back there it wasn't likely anybody would hear me. Suddenly, I heard the doors leading back to the shopping area open. I then saw one of my coworkers, Amy, walking over. I yelled at her and she asked what was going on. The man let me go and then sprinted out the doors outside. I ran over to Amy and explained to her what had happened. Amy told me that she had heard the person asking me to go to Channel 3. She said that when she didn't recognize the voice and was just being nosy in general, she turned to Channel 3 as well. She was wondering what I was being asked to do. When she heard I was supposed to go to receiving, she found it strange because she had just been there earlier in the night and wasn't aware of anything that would be done back there. She decided to see for herself, and I'm really glad that she did. We had to call the police and report the incident, but unfortunately, not much could be done. The man had bought a walkie-talkie and got on the same frequency as us, which was not hard to do at all. Many standard walkie-talkies were capable of it. I'm just glad I was all right. I've worked at Target for a few months after that, and luckily never saw the man again. This sinister story demonstrates how insidious human intentions can be under the guise of the mundane. The stranger, whose behavior quickly escalated from strange to clearly criminal, turned a safe workplace into a trap. This case serves as an alarming reminder. Do not discount even the slightest manifestations of suspicious behavior. And what would you do if you were the hero of the next story? Story 3. This happened last year. I was shopping at my local Walmart, just doing some typical shopping on a random weeknight. The store was pretty quiet and was probably around 8 or 9 pm. I had been in the store for about 15 minutes or so, and I was in the aisle where they have the fitness items. I was looking at one of those massage guns. I wasn't planning on buying one that day or even buying one at Walmart, but I had been considering getting one. When I walked by, I noticed it and stopped to read the box. I was in the aisle looking at it for a few minutes, and when I was doing so, I remember hearing some voices in the next aisle over. It happened to be a toy aisle, and this was at sort of the back corner of the store. I heard a man's voice, and then the voice of a child. At first, I paid no attention as I was looking, but soon I heard the man say, I will buy you this toy if you come with me. I assumed it was the child's father at first, but I didn't really know why he would say that. I couldn't really make out what the kid said back to him, but I heard the man then say something like, your mom said it's okay. Then I just had the crazy thought that maybe this wasn't the child's father. The man started saying, come on, let's go, a couple of times. I heard him starting to walk to the end of the aisle. I just had a really bad feeling about it. At the time, I didn't know if I was just being nosy or if I should do something. I decided to walk by the aisle and glanced down it to see. I left the aisle that I was in and walked into the next one over, which was a toy aisle. And when I looked down, I saw a man wearing a black jacket and winter hat holding the hand of a little kid. 
and leading her to the other end of the aisle. Their backs were facing me. I was kind of thinking on the fly, and I said, excuse me, to the guy. He turned around and looked really surprised. I picked up some random toy from the shelf. It was some type of stuffed animal. I said I wanted to ask the man a question if this would be a good gift for my niece. I then started walking over to them. He said he had no idea, and I said I thought he might know. I then asked if that was his daughter. He said no, and he was just watching her for the moment, but then said they really had to get going. Him and the child then walked away. I really wasn't sure if I should believe him or not. Maybe I was making too much of it. I realized it probably was a reasonable explanation, and I turned and started to walk into the opposite direction. I was telling myself that nothing was wrong, and I was just paranoid, but I'm not even kidding. About 30 seconds later, I heard a woman's voice calling out a name. For this story, let's just say the name was Sarah. The woman was calling out Sarah, not really loud but enough for people in the aisles nearby to hear, including me. I walked towards the voice and found the woman a few aisles down and more towards the center of the store. When I reached her, I asked if Sarah was her daughter. She looked concerned and said yes. I had a terrible feeling and I said that I might have seen her daughter with a man and I thought they might be leaving. We both started sprinting towards the front of the store. The good thing is that this was probably less than a minute since I had seen the man. When we made it to the front of the store, we saw the man and the child at the self-checkout area. He was buying one of the toys for her. The girl's mother started shouting, and the man claimed he was just trying to be nice and buy the toy for the girl. But he quickly tried to run away after realizing nobody would believe that. He ran out the door and was able to momentarily get away. I was just happy that the girl was okay and back with her mother. It turned out that the girl had wandered off from her mother to look at toys while her mom was shopping in another area of the store. The mother had believed that her child was nearby, but it actually wandered off much further. I also found out that the guy was located not long after this at all. Story 4 Back in early December, I had ventured out to do a bit of late night shopping. I'm a 31-year-old stay-at-home mother of two young children. So once my husband gets home from work, I like to take some time for myself to go shopping take a drive or run errands, and do that kid-free. It was around 8.30 p.m. when I arrived at the Target that I frequent. Now, I'm by no means a paranoid or anxious individual, but I've taken several courses in human trafficking, and I've done plenty of research on my own. Learning to identify the red flags as well as what precautions to always take whenever I'm out in public alone, especially at night. I carry several self-defense items on my person at all times, just in case. I parked directly in front of the store next to a car caddy and took a mental note of the vehicles that parked nearby, again just as precautions. I was taught at a really early age to always be observant of your surroundings, and being the control freak just naturally makes you that way. Nothing really seemed out of the ordinary that night, and the parking lot was actually quite empty most likely because it was a weekday. As I entered the store, I just began browsing like usual, following the natural flow of the store departments and following the main aisle around. I had only been browsing for maybe about 10 to 15 minutes when I noticed a young gentleman, mid-twenties, I think, tall and skinny, and dressed in a dirty gray two-piece sweatsuit and dark brown boots. He looked over at me, to which I smiled and said hello but his facial expression was completely blank. He looked like he may have been high on something by the look in his eyes, and he didn't really seem to care for my gesture as he quickly moved on. At first glance, there was really nothing in particular that alarmed me about him except that I'd noticed the fact that he was just wandering down the main aisle with no cart or basket. His hands were in his pockets, and he didn't seem to be with anyone. I just continued shopping with no second thoughts, and made my way to the next apartment. Several minutes had passed at that point, and that's when I noticed a second young gentleman wearing the same exact gray sweatsuit, a similar pair of work boots, and again, no cart or basket. He also glanced right at me, then quickly darted his eyes away when he realized I was looking directly at him. 
I started to become a bit more alert at this point, but still remained composed and continued browsing. Another 15 minutes or so had passed, and that's when a third older man caught my attention. And you guessed it, same gray sweatsuit and work boots with no cart or basket and his hands right in his pockets. I assumed that they were in some sort of work uniform, maybe construction workers, but why didn't they have any items to purchase? At this point, it was really difficult to focus on browsing. I just had a really bad feeling about these three men, and it became clear to me that something was definitely a bit off. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I felt as if I was being monitored by the three of them, as if they were all communicating my whereabouts. It seemed that no matter which department I entered, it didn't take long for me to notice one of the three men passing by whatever aisle I happened to be in, making their presence known to me. I stayed completely vigilant while trying not to panic or allow my suspicions to overwhelm me. Something about their presence felt very heavy and dark. So I decided to test their intentions just to prove to myself that I wasn't overthinking the situation and that the bad gut feeling was definitely valid. I began picking random aisles and traveling back and forth between the departments in a very unorganized and random fashion, just to see if the men would continue to pass by me as frequently as they had been before. With every aisle I popped into, it was just a few minutes later that one of them would make an appearance, staring me down as they passed by. It honestly felt like I was being surrounded like a wild animal hunted. Even the scariest part of all of this was that they were no longer trying to be inconspicuous. Everything instinctual was just screaming at me to get the hell out of there. I started to grip my cart tightly, and I figured if they got too close, I could just use the cart to try and push them away, or at the very least create some distance between us. By this point, I'd been shopping for about an hour altogether, maybe a bit over, and I was ready to purchase my items. But I honestly felt too uncomfortable to continue browsing, even if I wanted to. The men had been following me the whole time, and I was starting to become more annoyed if anything. Something that I want to add is that the store was pretty empty around this time. One of the main reasons that I really like shopping at night, but that made this particular situation even more unsettling than it already was. Two preteen girls were wandering around by themselves, which quickly caught my attention because the men had eyeballed them as well, making similar advances. But of course, the young girls were seemingly oblivious. So I quietly and quickly got their attention and asked them to go find their parents and stay with them, trying not to freak them out. At this point, the mother and me was in full-on protection mode. I couldn't imagine having my young children with me this night. Thank God that they were home safe and sound. As I made my way to the checkout, I noticed one of the men coming up from behind me walking at a quicker pace this time. So, I immediately stopped and turned to lock eyes with him as he approached. I'm not kidding. I will never forget the darkness that I saw in his eyes, an eerie smirk forming on his face as they nudged my shoulder, just continuing to stare me down while walking backward, all while holding on to his sinister gaze as he exited out of the store. I had lost sight of the other two men, and I hated the uncertainty of it all. He made his message clear to me in that very moment. My stomach dropped, and my entire body began to shake. It was a feeling that I hadn't felt since I was a little kid getting lost in the supermarket, a feeling of desperation. I quickly walked to the checkout and discreetly asked the cashier if I could speak to a manager. I told them what had transpired over the last hour and politely asked for a male employee to walk me to my car and for them to alert a member of their security. When I had finally told the manager everything that happened, her face had sunk as if she had already known about these men. Once I described them, she then confirmed that she knew exactly who I was talking about. She expressed to me that several of the female employees had encountered them in unsettling ways in the past. Then she reassured me that someone would definitely escort me to my car. She made a report about the incident and said she would alert the authorities. I was still shaking but felt pretty relieved that she believed me and also showed concern for the other young female patrons in the store. She took my information. Then a young male employee walked me out to my car. 
What I saw as I exited the store made me so sick to my stomach. Solidifying all of my suspicions, a white windowless van was parked in the road directly behind my car. One of the men was seated in the driver's seat, and the other two were leaning against the side of the van facing my car, then attempting to hide out of view. I mean, how cliché and obvious can you be? Your license plate might as well read Lady Snatchers. At that point, whatever their intent, it didn't seem pure. I pointed them out to the male employee and said, There they are, that's them. Which then prompted all of the men to scurry to the van and speed out of the parking lot without any hesitation. I truly have no idea what would have happened to me if I walked out to my car alone. And I'm so freaking grateful that I made it home safe and sound and lived to tell my story. Over that following week, I heard that there were several abduction attempts in the shopping center parallel to that target. And I'm almost certain that it was the exact same individuals. Human trafficking is very, very real. It's a very serious thing, and it can happen to anyone. You really have to watch your surroundings. Yes, human trafficking is a real problem. Girls, what precautions do you usually take? Write in the comments. I just realized that our lives are completely different in this regard. Story 5 I'm a female. I work a pretty standard job in an office five days a week. One thing I really like to do, though, is cook. I cook dinner for myself almost every night. In order to do so, I go to the store for fresh ingredients, probably every other day. Right on the way home from work, there's a Walmart only about a mile from my apartment, and I found that they usually have the cheapest prices, so I go there for produce and protein all the time. Sometimes I go to other stores, but by far the most common one for me is Walmart. The story takes place just a few months back. Like usual, I was stopping at Walmart after work. I would never get much, just like four or five ingredients usually, and sometimes whatever else I needed as well. I got off of work anywhere from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., so I'd usually head to Walmart shortly after. This store was usually sort of busy. One day, an employee by the produce area said hi to me. I mentioned this because the next time I was shopping, he said hi to me again when I was in the same area. Looking back, I hadn't really noticed him before, but I had never really paid attention to the employees. He was bald with a small dark beard and was sort of a big guy. He seemed very friendly. And the second time he asked me how my day was going, we made very basic conversation for maybe 30 seconds before I told the man I better go, and I continued with my shopping. This ended up becoming a regular thing over the next couple of weeks or so. Every time I was shopping, this same Walmart employee would say hi and engage in conversation with me. I didn't mind it too much because he was always really nice. Although when I was getting ingredients after work, I was sort of anxious to get home and didn't really want to chit chat. The man did start to ask slightly more personal questions each time, like if I was coming home from work, where I worked, and where I lived. Things like that were starting to weird me out a little bit. I wasn't sure if the man was just a really friendly employee or something else. I told myself he was just a nice guy. And like I said, it didn't really bother me. That was until one time I was walking through Walmart doing my usual shopping, and he approached me again. He asked me how my day was, and the usual then he asked me for my number. I was nice, but I told the man no. I was afraid he would get the wrong idea if I said yes. Besides, he should know how weird it sounded. I mean, come to think of it, I never really saw the guy doing any real work. He would always just be standing around and then talk to me. The man seemed offended when I said no. I started to try and explain my reasoning to the man, but he just turned and walked away as I started to speak. His whole body language changed. After he walked away, I resumed my shopping. He had gone further into the grocery aisles of the store, but luckily I didn't have to get anything back there. I was inside the Walmart shopping for maybe 10 more minutes before checking out and leaving. I remember that on that day, I parked in the back of the parking lot. When I got inside my car, I noticed that the Walmart employee was inside a car not too far away from mine. 
I really have no idea how I noticed him looking back, but I'm glad that I did. I was assuming that he was either on a break or had just gotten off of work for the day. He did not appear to be looking at me, which I was glad to see. I pulled out of my parking space only to see him pull out and exit the parking lot behind me. I watched in my rearview mirror, and he made the same two turns that I did to get back to my apartment. About a minute later, I was arriving at my apartment complex. I was kind of creeped out now because I was almost positive that this man did not live here. I drove around the parking lot of my complex a little and did not want to go straight to my building. I was really suspicious. The man's car trailed mine the entire time. When I realized that he was probably just going to follow me, no matter where I went, I decided to leave. I did not know where I was going, but I needed to get out of there. I drove down the quiet road near the complex to a busier one. Then I signaled to merge onto a busier road. At this hour, that road, in particular, was really busy because it was almost 5 p.m., now in rush hour. With the man right behind me, I waited for a gap in the traffic. After about 30 seconds, there was one, but I waited until the very last moment, and then pulled out. I basically cut the car off that was driving down the road, and there were several other cars behind it. The car honked at me, but the man behind me had no opportunity to merge at all. That allowed me to basically get away from the guy. I drove down the road for a very short time before turning. It was then that I had the idea to go back to the Walmart. I was fuming with anger. I drove straight back there into the customer service counter. When I got there, I told them about how one of their employees had followed me home. This Walmart didn't seem to be the most organized and they had to call up someone from the produce section to help. When I explained to them what had happened, they told me that nobody of that description works there. I realized that the man must have just put on a blue Walmart vest. Maybe he had worked at a Walmart in the past, or maybe he had just bought the vest online. Either way, he wasn't an employee of the store. I was even more creeped out now. They told me that they would keep an eye out for the man if he returned, which made me feel a very tiny bit better, but not a whole lot. After that, I very carefully drove back to my apartment again. Thankfully, I did not see the man or his car. I don't believe he knew which apartment building was mine either. Since that happened a few months ago, I have not seen the man. I also have not been back to that particular Walmart either. Story 6. My name is Suri, and I'm 17 years old. I always went with my mom to help her do her grocery shopping, and we usually always went to our local Walmart, and still do to this day. During the beginning of 2020, every place always created some sort of social distancing system to try and reduce the chances of spreading COVID. My local Walmart did this by enclosing one side of the store's entrance and keeping the other side open. The entrance and exit's automatic doors were separated by cones and police tape. One day, my mom, older brother, baby brother, and I all went together to shop. After I helped my mom with the groceries, she'd let me go off to wander around. She wasn't really worried since I was 14 at the time. And for the most part, I could take care of myself. I had worked for some money and I wanted to buy some incense sticks. So I went to where they were grabbed a few that I liked, and then met up with my mom and brothers. While we were waiting in line to pay for our stuff, my baby brother started to whine and became impatient. My mom then gave my older brother her car keys and told him to go wait in the car for us. Also, during this time, I had extreme social anxiety, and when my mom's groceries were almost done being scanned, that started to become nervous. I asked her if she could pay for my stuff for me, but she said no as she wanted me to learn to talk to people and start being more social. While she was paying, I began to notice the feeling of being watched. As I'm also a really paranoid person, I turned around and I saw a tall white old man that wore worn down worker clothes. They seemed to haven't been washed, as a shirt had many stains on it. He had a mask that was white and circular with yellow straps, kind of like what painters wear which I assumed as he also had white paint on his jeans. 
He had thin gray hair on the sides of his head and slicked hair that was placed over his bald spot. His face was really oily and dirty. I looked away as he gave me a weird smile that made me feel creeped out. My mom then told me that she was going to the car and she'd wait for me there as my baby brother cried alive whenever he was away from my mom. I said okay and nervously handed my stuff to the cashier. I had accidentally given her too much money because my anxiety made me panic. She handed me my receipt and I started to walk quickly to the doors to leave before I could hand my receipt to a Walmart employee to look at it. I heard a voice close behind me then say, oh, don't worry. I saw her pay. She didn't steal anything. I turned to look up and it was the same man from before, now behind me. He looked me up and down and then laughed. The old lady with the receipt laughed too, and I awkwardly chuckled. I realized at that moment that he was so quick with paying for his own stuff that he was able to catch up with me. The lady handed back my receipt, and I quickly walked out the doors. I paused and looked out into the parking lot, as I always have trouble trying to remember where my mom parks her car. Well, as I'm standing there, I hear his voice yet again. Hey, you know they're making a social distance for the coronavirus, right? I turned to look at him in shock as I then began thinking to myself why he persisted to follow me so fast and why the hell he wanted to make conversation with me. I didn't know what to do, so I just replied back with, yeah, I know, very quietly. I then turned back to the parking lot and I saw my mom pulling up to the front of the entrance walkway. I walked quickly to her car and the man followed behind me until he then finally went in a completely different direction. When he saw me going towards my mom, my mom didn't ask me what the man was telling me, and she told me to tell her before he could run away. I told her he was talking to me about the whole social distancing thing and nothing bad, but he was following me and really creeping me out. I then looked over to the man, who was still in the parking lot, and he was now staring at me while I was explaining to my mom what had happened. And look, I know it's gonna sound cliche as hell, but he then entered a white van that had a ladder strapped to the top of it. Nothing else ended up happening, and it was really just a creepy and bizarre encounter at the end of the day, but it really made me hyper aware of my surroundings even more. Well, sometimes our consciousness plays a cruel joke on us. This often happened until I started working with anxiety, and he didn't take the can. Think everyone should have a weapon, at least a pepper spray, Story 7. So I just got back from the store, and I've got to tell you about this experience I just had. It may not be as scary as some of the other encounters, but it still gives me the chills. Let me start this story off by saying that this morning I wasn't in the best of moods. I had to work the graveyard shift last night, and I woke up after only four hours of sleep with my back absolutely killing me. I couldn't get back to sleep, so I decided to run a few errands since I was now wide awake. I needed to get a haircut while I was out as well. My sister works at a salon that is right next to a Target. So after I got my sister to mow my scalp for free, by the way, I popped over to Target to grab a couple of items before heading home. So I'm just doing my thing and pushing my car down the frozen food section, and I turned the corner to go into the next aisle. What I did there was a middle-aged lady that was pushing her cart heading in the opposite direction. I nearly bumped into her, but then stopped before our carts collided. She gave me a mean look and then said in a really mean tone, excuse me. Now again, I have to say I wasn't in the best of moods and I'm a short-tempered person as it is. So without thinking, I shot back at her and then said, oh, shut up, you're fine. Call me an ass if you want. No one's perfect. But what happened next was just pure insanity. The lady then suddenly left her cart and then started to follow me. I noticed this about halfway down the aisle. And then I turned around to ask her what her problem was. And then, I kid you not, she rolled her eyes to the back of her head, pointed at me, and then screamed very loudly. And when I say screamed, I mean she was literally shrieking at the top of her lungs. It was like something right out of The Exorcist. 
I hurried down the aisle to try and get away from this insane person, but she started running after me. Needless to say, all of the bystanders immediately stopped what they were doing and then just stared at us. The lady kept screaming like a banshee at the top of her lungs while she chased me around the store. Well, I noped the hell out of there, ran out of the exit of the store, and I looked back into the store as I was heading for my car. The lady was standing just outside the now open automated sliding doors, just staring at me. While she stood there, her mouth was hanging wide open, and she was still just pointing at me. Her eyes were still rolled right into the back of her head, and all you could see were the whites of her eyes. She suddenly turned around then quickly walked back into the store. I decided to pick up my stuff at Walmart that was just down the street instead. All I could think though the entire drive home was, what the hell was that? That was insane. So to the creepy screaming, possibly possessed banshee lady, I mean perhaps I shouldn't have been so rude to you, but you still have more than one screw loose in your noggin, and you really need help. But anyways, I definitely hope to never encounter you in the future. The next story is very close to me. At one time I worked in a store and sometimes stayed up late. I always didn't want to see someone else who, you know, shouldn't be here. Story 8. I used to work at a Walmart a couple of years ago. This was my strangest experience. I mostly worked overnights and would stock shelves. It was an easy job for me. I would start at like 9 p.m. And at first, the store would actually be open but would close only like two hours into my shift. There would never be very many customers in that time anyways. A good number of us worked overnights because obviously Walmart is a really big store. On this one night, I happened to be working in the pets and supplies aisle, which is in the back end of the store. I've been working in that general area, but not that exact aisle earlier in the night. But by now, it was about 11.30 p.m. Our store closed at 11, so we had been closed for 30 minutes now. As I was in the pet supply aisle, I was just stocking one of the shelves by myself. When the store closed, I would often put in headphones and listen to music while I worked, which is what I was doing. It helped work go by faster and easier for me. But out of nowhere, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. It appeared as though somebody had walked by. I looked over, but they were now gone. I assumed it to be one of my coworkers, and once a few minutes went by, I kept working. Then again, I saw somebody at the end of the aisle out of the corner of my eye. I looked over, and this time the person did not walk away. It wasn't one of my coworkers, though. It looked like just some guy that I had never seen before. When I looked at him, he disappeared behind the next aisle. I got up and walked over, and then looked down the next aisle. When I did, I saw the man disappearing out of that aisle and into the one after that. I took out my headphones and then radioed in on my walkie that I thought I saw somebody inside the store who wasn't supposed to be here. After that, I kept doing my work. About an hour later, I went to the back room. That area was pretty large in our store, but I was the only one back in that section at the time. When I was walking over there, I was sure that I saw the man again. I could see him hiding behind a box underneath one of the shelves there. I didn't stare at him, and I acted like I never saw him. I was going to walk past, but I decided to turn around, and then go the other way instead. He was maybe 30 feet away when I began walking back. I heard noises behind me, even with my headphones in. I started running for the exit to go back into the sales floor. I heard footsteps behind me when I did. When I got there, I opened the door, and the man did not come out after me. I ran to find the nearest employee. That was Al, who was working in the electronics overnight at the time. I told him that I saw a man in the back, and he decided to come back and see. I had a bad feeling, and I wondered if the guy was dangerous. We both went back there anyways. When we opened the door to the back, we heard the sound of another door opening. It was coming from one of the doors we had back there that opened up to the outside. They were rarely used. We walked in further, just in time to see the guy walking out of the store and the door closing behind him. After that, 
he was gone. I still don't know how the man got inside. My only guess is he somehow avoided all employees and hid inside the store until after we had closed. I also wonder what he was going to do to me when he was hiding in the back and then followed me. Luckily, I quit that job not too long afterwards. Story 9 As a 22-year-old Target employee, I led a pretty normal life, but the experience I'm about to tell you caused me to quit my longtime job there. It all began with a mysterious person who seemed to be following me every day at work. At first, it was nothing out of the ordinary. We get a lot of shoppers, as people make a habit of getting groceries for themselves every single week. So I did see a lot of the same people. But this man looked to be somewhere in his mid-thirties, and I had never seen him before. He had a healthy build but only wore a half-zip button-up and normal blue jeans, and he started to appear more frequently. At first, he would come in and purchase food and leave, so I was never concerned about him. But then, as days went by, I had noticed that he would show up during all of my shifts and simply wander around the store without buying anything. I also couldn't shake off the feeling that he was watching me because every time I would glance over to him, we would make brief eye contact, and then he would instantly look away. On Sunday during the same week, he kept showing up. Not once, but three times during my shift, he loitered around the aisles, sitting on corners and stealing glances in my direction. This was a huge red flag to me, and at this point, the man was definitely stalking me. So I decided to keep an eye on him at all times, no matter where I was, and was even planning to tell my store manager the next day if he showed up one more time. One evening, I decided to tell one of my co-workers about the creep. I walked up to my co-worker Sarah, and I told her everything about how I was worried for my safety. Sarah asked, have you talked to anyone else about this? Maybe a manager or security? Not yet. I replied, feeling a bit dramatic about the situation. I wanted to see if he would show up again today. If he does, I'm definitely going to talk to our store manager tomorrow. As I stood at the checkout counter, Sarah approached me with a concerned look on her face. He's back again, isn't he? She asked. I nodded. Yeah, I've been watching him. It's starting to freak me out. Sarah squeezed my arm reassuringly. Listen, after work today, I'll walk you to your car. Don't worry, I'll make sure you're safe. Relieved to hear this from her. I responded, thanks, Sarah. I really appreciate it. I just want to feel safe again. Almost immediately after me and Sarah had our conversation, the man approached me while I was working at the checkout counter. He approached with a smile, invaded my personal space as he said, Hey there, how's your day going? Enjoying your time working here? I felt a knot forming in my stomach, but I tried to maintain my composure. I'm just doing my job. Can I help you with something specific? He had a huge smile on his face and seemed to be extremely pleased that he was finally talking to me. It gave me the greets. You're such a dedicated worker. I'm curious, when do you usually get off from your shifts? I might have some free time and it would be nice to meet up. My heart raced, but I stayed calm. I took a step back, creating some distance. I'm sorry, but I can't give out personal information like that. It's against our policy. Can I assist you in anything else? He continued to press me with more questions. No need to be so guarded. I just want to get to know you better. Tell me, do you live around here? It would be convenient for us to spend more time together. My anxiety slowly turned into anger as I just wanted this creep to leave. I said one last time in a more demanding tone. I'm not comfortable sharing personal details with strangers. Please respect my boundaries and stop asking invasive questions. Ignoring what I just said, he leaned over and whispered to me, you're making it difficult for us to connect, but don't worry. I'll find out where you live eventually. He then got up, smiled, and walked away out of the front exit as if nothing had happened. Later that day, as we made our way through the empty parking lot, me and Sarah were looking around to see if the man was anywhere near, but there was no sign of anyone. 
Only about seven cars were in the entire parking lot. Sarah noticed my unease and said, stay close to me, we're almost there. As we made our way through the empty parking lot, I started to feel like he was still there, so I hurried to my car. Just as I finally got to my car and put the keys in the door and unlocked it, when all of a sudden, I heard scuffles from behind me and the man was grabbing me from behind. He had Sarah in one hand by the arm, his hand clamping tightly over my mouth. I fought back as best as I could because he was 10 times stronger than me. In that moment, adrenaline fueled my instincts. I remembered the pepper spray I kept in my purse for emergencies, managed to reach for it just in time, spraying a huge stream of liquid right into his eyes, and he released me and Sarah. For some reason in a moment like this, my first thought after was to kick him in his vulnerable area. I was a soccer player in college, so you can already imagine the pain that I caused this stalker, and he fell to the ground in agony. We wasted no time, and we both sprinted to my car, heart pounding in my chest, and sped away from that target, shaking from all the adrenaline. Sarah and I dialed 9 to 11 to report the incident, praying that help would arrive before the man left. Police launched an investigation, and soon enough, they caught the man when the video footage from the store's security cameras revealed his identity. They were able to track him down. It turned out he had a history of stalking and harassment and was taken to jail, as well as a restraining order and being banned from every single target. Story 10. So, when I was 16 years old, I got my first job working at Target. Most of what I would do is just walk around the store tidying up and stocking shelves. Pretty easy job. One day, I was stocking up food when a guy comes up to me to ask where a product was. I told him, and I offered to show him where it was. So, I walked him over and started to leave. He was like, hey, wait, and assuming he needed more help, I went back over to him. Then, he immediately started grilling me with questions. How old are you? What ethnicity are you? Where do you live? Do you always work here? And then, to my dismay, when do you get off work today? He had a really creepy and unsettling smile, and he was vaguely cross-eyed, which in this weird situation just totally added to his creepy vibe. I just told him that I didn't know when I would get off work, and deflected most of his other questions, and then walked away. A couple of days later, he appeared in the store yet again and found me. I was really scared when I saw him, and he asked me again when I get off work, and what I was doing after work. Again, I said I didn't know and started to walk away. But then, he started following me, and then started telling me that I was so beautiful, just like his wife. Yeah, it was getting weird, and I was getting really uncomfortable. So I tried to find a coworker and try to talk to him to get him away from me, or at least have someone else witness his weirdness. Well, I couldn't find anyone, so I said that I had to go work at the cash register instead. That got him to go away, but not before he gave me the creepiest smile that I'd ever seen and then said, I'll see you after work. I was pretty creeped out at that point, in case he stalked me home after work or waited in the parking lot for me. I didn't want to tell my manager since I mean, I had just started my job, and I didn't really want to make a big deal out of it. I know, pretty stupid decision, but luckily, nothing happened after work. The guy stopped showing up, and I don't think I ever saw him again after that. I guess he just wanted to scare me, but still, it was pretty creepy nonetheless. Story 11. I used to shop at Target all the time, but recently, I don't want to go back there. At least not to the location that I live by. Some creepy and weird things happen to me there. There is really only one Target that's close to where I live. It's been my main store for years to get just about anything. There are some other stores that I go to as well, but Target has the best variety. I've always preferred it over Walmart as well. One night, I went shopping after work. I was getting a lot of items, mainly groceries. I got a cart and began shopping around the store. It wasn't all that busy, and that made things go smoothly. After shopping for probably about 30 minutes, I was almost done. My cart had lots of items in it, 
and I was in the last area of the store that I would be going to, which was the cold section. The refrigerated items and the freezer items are what I would always get last. That way they wouldn't melt by the time I got home. When I got to that section of the store, it was empty. I was the only person there. They had a freezer at the back of the store, and I was getting something from it when I saw something strange. It was like movement of some sort behind the items. This particular freezer section was up against the very back of the store, leading to the back room. That's when I realized that a person was back there, behind the freezer shelves. See, between the levels of shelves that they had, but not by much, somebody was right behind the spot that I was. At first, I thought it was kind of funny, but I soon realized it wasn't a Target employee. I moved down to get something else, and whoever was there seemed to move down with me. As I was examining a product, I could see that the person was wearing black, not the typical red shirt and khakis that a Target employee would wear. Then they got closer, and I noticed that I could now see their head through the gap between the shelves. The person was wearing a black ski mask. My only thought was that this was really strange. I moved even further down, and the masked man moved down with me. He was beginning to really freak me out. He kept staring at me from the other side. Luckily for me, I only needed one more item from that aisle. I went to grab it as the masked man stared at me. Then, as I was reaching for the product, the guide reached over and shoved the whole box of them at me. Multiple items fell onto the floor. I put them back as he disappeared into the freezer. This guy was causing problems, and I decided to tell an employee about him. I walked down a few aisles before finding somebody who worked there. I told them about the guy and how he was inside of the freezer. The employee told me that she would tell a person to leave and that they couldn't be back there. There happened to be doors leading to the back room of the store right nearby, and I watched her walk through them. About a minute later, the employee emerged again. She told me that she couldn't find anybody back there at all. Whoever had been doing that must have left. I hadn't seen anybody else come out of the doors though. I shrugged it off and was done with my shopping, so I decided to head out. I walked up to the front and paid for everything, then left the store. About a week later, I returned. I would say that I went grocery shopping roughly once a week. I didn't have a specific day or anything like that that I would go, but on average it was probably about once. This time that I went back to Target was just like any other. I did all my shopping in about 30 minutes or so, and then checked out with all my items. After I left the store, I walked out to my car and unloaded the groceries into it. Then I started driving home. This particular Target has several other businesses around it, like just past the parking lot. There was also a few trees and bushes around for scenery. As I was driving away, leaving the parking lot, I was driving between some other businesses and the Target parking lot, going to a connecting road. That's when I saw the same guy, dressed in all black and a ski mask. He was halfway hiding behind a bush, and he popped out and looked directly at me as I drove away. I drove right past him in disbelief. This was the same guy who I had seen last time I had been at the same Target. But this time he was outside, not inside the store. It was crazy to me how I specifically saw him. Maybe he just liked to go to Target and mess with people. I really didn't know, but what I did know is that I was really weirded out by this. The way he was hiding in the bushes was concerning. Luckily, I was away from him now and on the way home. After that experience, I didn't go to Target for almost two weeks. When I returned, it was just another routine shopping trip, just like any other. I did my shopping like always and then left the store. It was nighttime again, and things were pretty quiet inside and outside of the Target. I had parked sort of in the middle of the parking lot, about halfway back. There were a few other cars around mine. I got back to my car, unloaded the groceries again, and got inside. I started my engine and was just about ready to drive away. I happened to glance over at the car that was parked directly next to me, to the left for no particular reason. And I glanced over, though I noticed movement. It caught my attention and my eyes stayed focused on it. The entire car had looked empty to me, 
The car was a standard-looking white sedan, and the back windows were tinted dark, but the front windows I could see through. That's when somebody emerged from the back seat, crawling over into the front passenger seat. It was a guy wearing all black and a ski mask. My jaw dropped when I saw this. He looked right at me through the window separating us. He continued to stare at me for probably five seconds or so as I sat there in total shock. Then his door started to open. I was so surprised still from just seeing the guy that I didn't do anything. It was like I couldn't move. After he opened the door, he stood up and reached for my driver's door. I finally came to my senses and hit the lock switch. Just moments later, the man with the mask tried opening my driver's door, which had just locked. He then leaned in very closely to my driver's window, basically pressing his face against it. I was beyond creeped out. He stared right at me as close as he possibly could. I yelled at him to go away, but he didn't move. I put my car into reverse and then started backing out. The guy grabbed onto my car as I backed away. He was trying to stay with me. And when I had backed out and began driving, he finally let go. I saw him then run back to the car that he had been inside. I hit the gas harder to leave as soon as possible. Then I was able to make it out of the parking lot, and I quickly turned onto a busier street. After that, I quickly turned into another parking lot and then turned my lights off and parked. I watched, and several seconds later, I saw a car come out of the target parking lot and drive quickly down the street past me. I was pretty sure that that was the guy. After the car was long gone, I was able to drive home, and I made it back okay. This wasn't all that long ago. Each of the last three times I went to that target, I've seen the same man. Why is he there, and what is he doing? I really don't know. I haven't been back to that target since. Story 12 I'm a sure medium-sized girl. One day, around the time that I was eight months pregnant, I decided to make a trip out to Target to buy some things. I'm a very cautious person, constantly looking at my surroundings with mild paranoia, which was mostly inherited from my mom, who raised three kids all on her own. So she was always on guard. I got out of my new car, which I parked a little far from the store entrance for two reasons. I didn't want to get any dents from the other drivers, and I tried to get as much exercise as possible since I was pregnant. As I'm walking, I noticed a huge red truck, with three men inside of it with the windows down. I assumed that they were just waiting for someone inside the store, but something creeped up my neck when I made eye contact with the driver. I quickly turned away and then immediately began to feel self-conscious. A small girl that was visibly pregnant, I suddenly felt so vulnerable. Up until that point, my pregnancy was pretty smooth and never really made me feel like a target. Once I finally got in the store, I started to calm down a bit more and feel a bit relaxed and went about my shopping. When I left the store though, I noticed that the same truck was still there. I put my bag in the trunk and got in my car as quickly as possible then quickly turned it on and drove away. I noticed in my rearview mirror that the same truck was also taking off with the same three men still inside of it. My heart sank. I had realized right then and there that they weren't waiting for anyone inside the store. I got into the lane that can only make a left turn, and they were in a lane that can only go straight, a few cars behind me. I thought, great, we're not going in the same direction. I was just being paranoid. As I passed the light now turning, I saw the red truck and switched the lane that I was in to turn left. I sped up to catch the next light turning yellow to put as much distance between them and me. I drove a little faster than usual, but then I realized that even if I made it home, they could still follow me there, and I would be going home to an empty house. So instead, I decided to drive past my street right to a shopping center that had a Starbucks. The drive wraps around the building, so you're not going to be visible to the main road, which I was driving in. I get into the drive through and I noticed the red truck was going on the road that I just left. They drive past the Starbucks, and I think, good, I'm in the clear now. As I'm still in the drive through 
I didn't see the truck pass by again in the opposite direction, almost as if they're looking for me. I waited in the drive through for all of the other cars to leave, and I decided to call my sister and tell her I'm heading to her place. I didn't want to go home alone, and my boyfriend wouldn't be home for several hours. As I'm driving to my sister's house, which is about 25 minutes away, my mind just begins to wonder if they had ever caught up to me or what could have happened if these men were following me. Any possible danger that could have happened to me or my baby made me so paranoid that I didn't even leave my house for the remainder of my pregnancy. By the time I got to my sister's, I was absolutely shaking over it. I had told my sister all of the details and everything that happened. I never did see the men again or their red truck, and I'd really like to keep it that way. Story 13. I'm a former Target employee. I worked there five years ago, pushing carts in the parking lot. This was one of my favorite jobs that I've had so far, to be honest. It was pretty enjoyable and easy work. However, I do have one really scary story to tell, something that still creeps me out when I think about it. I worked at a super Target, and it was in a busy area. The store and the parking lot were very big, and they were close to other stores and restaurants that were nearby. This made work challenging occasionally because of how busy it would get. One time, I was working a night shift, and it had been really busy in the day earlier, but by now things were very calm. It felt like the calm after the storm because the carts were scattered throughout the parking lot, not just in the corals. This was typical on busy days. Later, I would go all around the parking lot and retrieve the carts that were not in the corals. I would also bring all the ones that were in the corals back to the store. Obviously, with how busy it had been earlier, I hadn't been able to keep up with the parking lot as perfectly as I would like. So it was probably about 9 p.m. or so. I went to the northeast corner of the parking lot. There was a car against the curb at the corner farthest away from the store. I walked over and got the cart. As soon as I was grabbing it, I noticed an SUV pulling into this area of the parking lot. There was an entrance slash exit right there as well. The SUV did not keep driving though. Instead, it stopped right in front of me. I found this kind of strange, but I just got the cart and started walking back to the store. But that's when I heard a voice call out, hey, I looked back and saw a man getting out of the SUV. The vehicle was not parked in a parking space, but just parked there, partly covering two different spaces and the driving area. The guy said to me that maybe I could help him with something. I stopped with the cart and looked back at him. I asked him what he needed help with. The man waved me over and I started walking to him. He said that he didn't know if I knew much about cars or not, but he didn't and something weird was happening with his. The man was short but looked sort of strong. I did know a little bit about cars, but not a whole lot. I was hoping that I would be able to help the man with this problem though. Then the man asked me to get inside the back seat of his car and listen to the weird noise it made when he drove. The question really seemed to come out of left field. It took me by surprise, and it also seemed really sketchy. I changed my mind suddenly. Actually, I really don't know anything about cars, I said. Then I turned around to get my cart and started walking back over to it. The man told me to wait, but I didn't. I kept walking, making my way back to the target. I heard footsteps of the man coming after me though. This was really strange. I sped up and the guy behind me seemed to speed up as well. At that point, I decided to just start sprinting. I felt like I was in danger, and I knew if I made it into Target, I would be safe. I ran all the way there, sprinting with the cart, and the man could not keep up and stop chasing me. When I got back inside, I decided to work on the other end of the parking lot for a while. And that's exactly what I did. I also tried to stay close to the building as I collected carts from the other end. Everything went fine. I looked out to the other side of the parking lot where the man in his car had been, and I didn't see him or the SUV. He must have left, which was good. After working for a while, it was time for my final break of the day. It was a 15-minute break. I walked back inside 
and into the break room. There I sat on my phone, scrolling through social media and Snapchatting with friends. At that time, I was the only person in the break room, with it being late. There was an overlap of people at the end of their evening shifts or at the beginning of their overnight shifts. Nobody else was taking their break. This was fine with me. About halfway through, I heard the door to the break room open and close. There was a little hallway with a closet that led into the break room. I expected somebody to enter the room, but no one did. I didn't think anything of it. I continued sitting in my chair and looking at my phone, but several moments later, I had a strange feeling. It was like the feeling that I was being washed. I usually don't get this feeling. So when I did, I turned around. That's when I saw the guy who had chased after me earlier. He was standing in the entrance of the break room, looking right at me. Then he started walking closer to me. I got up and once again sprinted away from the man. I ran out the other exit of the break room, which led to an employee's only area where you punched in and there was a desk there as well. Nobody was back there at the time. There was also a door leading to outside, and I ran out of it and back into the parking lot. I ran around to the other entrance door and quickly found one of the managers. I told them the whole story, but when they went into the break room, the man was gone. He must have exited after I had. Luckily, I didn't have much time left on the clock. I worked very carefully for the next 30 minutes or so, then I punched out and went home. I never saw the man again after this incident. I worked at Target for quite a while, and nothing like that ever happened again, which I'm glad to say. Story 14. I was 21 years old during this time, and I was in college, but I was looking for ways to fund my class expenses. I had asked around if there was any easy work that they could recommend for me. Luckily, my friend was working part-time in a pharmacy with an easy workload, so she recommended me to the boss, and I was scheduled for an interview. The pharmacy was right in the heart of the Filipino community in Toronto, around Bathurst and Wilson. It was a small pharmacy owned by an elderly man and his family. I went in and I wore a casual outfit, just an orange shirt and black jeans with flip-flops. When I went inside, the owner greeted me and he asked me to go to the office for the interview. Looking around, the pharmacy had also served as a mini convenience store, with the back end of the store serving as the pharmacy itself. My job was to handle the checkout for the convenience store, but also handle the medications if there's no one at the till. Needless to say, I got the job, and I was scheduled to work the next week with my friend to train me for two days. The following week, I went in with my friend, and she trained me while I followed her around the store. It was a good two days, and she said that I was good to be left alone already. And so that's what happened the next day. The next day was a Wednesday, and I went to work very bright. I was nervous because I would handle the till on the pharmacy side by myself without my friend this time, as well as the owner of the store. I arrived and checked in. Now, to check in, you have to go to the store office at the back of the store. I started to work, and everything was fine. I'm about 30 minutes in now when things started to dwindle down. I noticed the owner looking at me, and he then called me over. We started talking, and he asked me about my face as I had acne at the time. He told me he had something he wanted to give me later. I just said okay, and went back to the till because there was somebody there. After checking them out, I returned back to the office and he was there holding something. He gave me some cortisone cream and explained what to do with it. I thanked him, but it seemed he had something else that he wanted to say to me. He then asked me to lean down as he was a few inches shorter than me, and I did. He then suddenly grabbed me, seemingly for a hug, but then kissed me on the cheek. I was honestly shocked. My friend had told me that the owner was a friendly man, but I wasn't used to this level of friendliness. I mean, kissing on the cheek was normal, right? Well, at the time, I thought it was, so I'm frozen and not knowing what to do, and I'm just standing there as he was pecking me on the cheek. When I felt it was too much, I started to pull back, but he wouldn't let me go. I was frozen. It was a miracle that someone then came in because he then pushed me away, 
Somebody's here, he said, as if I was the one who initiated this. I then went to the till, still shaken up a bit, the ointment clutched in my hand. I then looked around for a camera. There were two cameras, but unfortunately, all of them were pointed at the pharmacy, none towards the office. There was no way of getting evidence about what happened. I kept on wondering if what just happened was real. Should I report it? Was it harassment? So I decided to get evidence. I tried calling my friend and keeping her on the phone. She didn't answer, so I decided to try an audio recording. Then I had my phone in my pocket when the owner called me to the back of the office yet again, and I was ready, just praying that my phone wouldn't stop recording as I only had a little bit of phone memory at the time. I had stopped by the doorway of the office so that I was within the bounds of the store's camera. He got frustrated and pulled me into the office and resumed what he was doing. I waited for a few seconds to try and push away, but for some reason, I was just frozen. I knew this wasn't right. He then initiated to pull back, and he started caressing my cheek and chin. It went on, saying that I was really beautiful and that he could give me gifts and medication for my acne. I just said nothing and waited until I could return back to the till. I went back to the till, my safe zone, and I then checked my phone for the recording. Wouldn't you know it, it stopped recording just a few seconds in. There wasn't enough memory on the phone, it said. Frustrated, I needed to record something then go to the police. I mean, surely they'll help me out, right? I had another chance to record in the afternoon within the bounds of the store camera. I had started asking him why he was giving me gifts, hoping he would then say something that was more than enough evidence. He played it safe, but there was a portion that said to ask him for anything, and he'd give it to me. And that can serve as my evidence. When I went back home later in the day, I checked my recording, but I was shocked to find that the audio wasn't clear. It was a garbled mess. I was lost. I didn't know what to do at this point. My friend called me back asking why I called her. I explained what happened, and she said it was weird that that never happened to her or any of the other co-workers. After the call, I was then thinking to myself, did my friend even believe me? Would the police believe me? I don't even have evidence of this happening. I just felt really dirty, and then no one would believe me. Now you're probably all thinking that after all this, I surely would have left but I didn't. My family was lacking funds, and I really needed to stay for school expenses without asking them for help. I stayed for three months, and during the harassment were only three days, as I'd finally had enough, and I decided to be unpleasant to the owner. He stopped giving me gifts one month in, and he decided to fire me after three months. It was his son who did the talking, saying that I should have smiled more often in the store, and that I should have been more pleasant. I wanted so badly to tell the son what happened, but I just couldn't find the words. Though I wasn't the one who quit, I felt relief that I was out. I was free. For those who are wondering, the store is still there, still open with the same old man and his cursed family. Story 15 I was 18 years old, and I had just moved into my new apartment with my best friend in a totally new city. I grew up in the country my whole life, so living in a city was kind of a strange feeling for me. I had really bad social anxiety, so I'd always avoid going to the grocery store during the day as much as possible. On this night, I decided to head out at around 1.30 am to go get some things that we needed for our place. I drove into an almost empty Walmart. There were maybe about five cars in total in the parking lot so I was pretty happy to avoid any social interaction with anyone. The moment I walked into the store, two men took notice of me. They were just standing there watching me as I then grabbed a cart and headed towards the produce section. They were situated next to the women's bathroom. My thought at the time was they must have checked out and they're about to head to their car. I could feel their eyes on me as I shopped until I saw, at the corner of my eye, them leaving the building. I sighed with relief. My biggest fear at the time was that they'd aggressively try to ask me for my number or harass me throughout the store. They just had that vibe to them, 
I purposely took a little longer than usual shopping for my items. I just wanted to make sure that they were actually long gone before I left the store. I just had a feeling. I checked out, and at this point, I was probably one of the only customers in the store. The moment I exited the store, I noticed a car right next to mine that wasn't there before. It was an Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. I knew that because my family had the same car back in the 90s. I then noticed those same two men I saw earlier standing next to it and smoking a cigarette. My heart just sank for a moment, and I thought, should I go back inside? Should I ask someone to walk me to my car? What the hell do I do? I decided that I didn't want to embarrass myself over nothing, so I decided to risk it. Now, my smartest idea ever as I briskly walked back to my truck. I thought that maybe if I smiled at them and acted real nice, they won't try anything funny. I walked over to my car, seemingly very confident in myself, and just gave the men a little smile. That's when one of them looked straight at me and then said, it's a quiet night. I knew that I said those words to scare me, so I picked up my pace even more. Just when I thought I was about to be attacked, a lovely customer then left the building. I was so relieved. I ran real fast to my car and locked the door. I swear that I did this in lightning speed. The minute I jumped in, they drove off as fast as I could, and I realized they had taken off behind me too. All I wanted to do was go home, but I didn't want them to know where I lived. So I just kept driving down really weird roads, all while they followed me. I then had a brilliant thought. I would park my car on the police station's parking lot, and sure enough, they turned down another road. I sat there for a while, called my roommate, and I told her all about what had happened to me. I made sure as I drove home that no cars were following me. The next morning, I was at work when my roommate called me over. She looked completely spooked. She asked if the waitress would retell me what she had just told her. It turns out, the next town over, only 10 minutes away from where I lived, at 3 a.m. in another Walmart parking lot, a girl was attacked and grabbed. From what I was told, she had fought really hard to break free from the grass while they tried to force her into their car. She had kicked and screamed until someone from the Walmart came out of the store, and the guys then hopped in their car and sped off. I asked the waitress if she remembered anything about what car they drove, and sure enough, it was an Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. Story 16. So this all takes place in August of last year, right before I moved to a different state for school. This story involves myself, 18 at the time, and my sister and cousin, both 14 at the time. On the day in question, we decided to go on what we like to call an oozy adventure, where we basically get in the car and pretty much just drive until we find something to do. On this day, we decided to go to a Target, but instead of the one we usually go to, we decided to go to a different one that was in the south end of the city which we live near. A little bit of background about the area I lived in. I grew up most of my life just outside of Detroit, but moved to a more boogie area when I got in high school. The part of this area I lived in was in more of a suburban downtown side, but on the south end, it was pretty well known that all of the weird and dangerous people lived down there. Some examples. A few months before this incident, a black boy was shot walking to school by some retired firefighter just for asking for directions. And just this year, a lady was found nude, attacked, and then strangled, and was then bitten multiple times on the face by her attacker, which also happened just down the road from this target. But thankfully, she did survive. Anyways, for some reason, I still didn't really know why we decided to go to the South Target instead of our usual one. However, we get there, and my sister and my cousin get a couple of things for school while I just pick up a CD. We check out, and we go out to the car, and we see a green Chevy Trailblazer that's now parked right next to my car. I didn't really notice anything unusual besides the fact that the driver's seat was then reclined all the way back, and the window was slightly open and it looked like someone was sleeping in the car. My sister gets into the passenger seat and my cousin right behind her, 
and literally the second she got in the corner, she said, Drive, drive the hell out of here right now. I didn't really think too much of it though because she didn't really sound panicked or anything, at least not to me. So I do as she said, and I start to drive. And we pulled onto the main road. That's when she told me that she saw some old man lying in the driver's seat jerking off to people walking past, more specifically children and their moms. My cousin said she saw them too, and we of course freaked the hell out and tried to decide what we should do. We ended up pulling over in a Staples parking lot and sitting there trying to decide if we should call the cops or not. My sister is crying at this point and having an anxiety attack because she thought that she'd get in trouble with our parents for calling the cops. I eventually convinced my cousin to call 911 for us and put in a report because my sister was still crying about not wanting to call the cops and I really suck at phone calls. So it was really just best my cousin did it. Maybe about a half an hour later or something, right after the incident, we get a call from the police, pretty much telling us that they found him in the car with his pants off and his tic-tac out, and that since he was a repeat offender and did this apparently extremely often, we needed to come to the station to file an official report. We tried to convince them to allow us to make it at the target parking lot since they were there still, but they wouldn't allow it. I also want to add that during all of this, our parents had no idea what was going on, and I'm not really sure we wanted them to know, specifically my aunt, because, well, she's pretty well known to blow stuff extremely out of proportion, and she would probably never let my cousin out of the house again. But now that we're gonna be at the station, we really had no other choice but to tell them. So we tell our parents and my mom, dad, brother, aunt, uncle, and cousin all meet us up at the station. I remembered that there was maybe about one or two POS on duty that night, and we had to wait a couple of hours while they called the detective at his house. So he literally ended up interviewing us right in his pajamas in the fax room. Months later, I was going to school in another state when we all got subpoenas to come to court. We ended up having to go to court two separate times and I actually had to fly home for about a month or two the second time because he apparently appealed or something before eventually pleading guilty the second time around. And now he's out on parole. To end this story, we don't go to that target anymore, ever. The last that I've heard about this was a call from the parole officer pretty much just asking my viewpoint and if I ever go to therapy over it. I guess on a lighter note though, because my family and I have a pretty warped sense of humor we now refer to it as the pickle tickler incident. Anyways, 74 year old man, that we found tickling your pickle in your car to little kids and caused us to spend hours at the police station. Let's definitely not meet again, ever.